I believe that being on this path for me is helping me to understand the true nature of reality mm. and how I fit into the big picture, what the true nature of my own reality is. Mm -hmm. I'd like to learn more. So that's when I went to the local bookstores I was telling you earlier and, and I thought, well, I'll see if I can find any books about Sai Baba. Don King certainly found a book about Sai Baba, but what happened to him regarding the book he discovered just about took his breath away. Welcome to Soul Journeys. How an engineer, currently the president of the Sri Satya Sai Baba Center in Louisville, Kentucky, discovered how his life would forever change with Sai Baba. This interview was recorded in Louisville, Kentucky in November 2018. You know, I had a uh, health crisis in my late teens and early 20s. And uh, it's, you know, it, it prompted me to um, think differently about life because it was pretty serious. I was uh, right on the verge of cancer. And um, part of the issue was genetics and, and just having a predisposition for it. But the other problem was that I was a highly stressful person and I was very, very driven. After going through, you know, several surgeries and all of this time to try to heal and, and doing this while I was in college and, and um, you know, really struggling with um, the difficulty of all of it, it really prompted me to start thinking about a lot of things. So as a result, even though I had been raised Roman Catholic in a very devout family and had been very devout myself when I was young, I began to think about questions that I couldn't find answers to in Catholicism. So I began to branch out and, and look at other things. You know, I just kind of got on this path of seeking. Yeah. So in the process of doing that, I went to a uh, conference, it was a spiritual conference with my wife, and Carolyn Mace, the yeah. intuitive healer, was speaking, and she mentioned Satya Sai Baba, and she told the story. About Vibhuti. About Vibhuti. And, Do and, you remember the name of the place in uh, England and Scotland? That... I sure don't remember the, the place because it's been 20 years, yeah. but you know, she, she told this story of someone who was very ill, I believe it was England, and Miraculously, that person received the booty in the mail and used it and was completely healed. Which, of course, you know, all of us are amazed and uh, gets our attention when we hear about a miracle like mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, especially for someone like me who had had a health crisis at yeah. a young age. I read Carolyn Mace's book, Anatomy of the Soul, and, and then, you know, I continued to kind of study her materials, and I started reading other materials, and, and, but I was still curious, very curious about Satya Sai Baba. And then uh, I had started my own business, and uh, one of the things I was doing uh, was website development, and I met a Western astrologer who wanted me to help her build a website, and she in return would give me astrological readings. Okay. You know? And uh, one time I went to her home for a meeting and she had pictures of Sai Baba all over the place <laughs> and started talking to me about him and telling me all about her experience with him. And So this was your second encounter. This with was Sai my Baba. second encounter, yes. And and he you know, through her he was speaking to me. Mm-hmm. The story was becoming a little bit more clear, who he was, where he was, and she told me of her experience, which was very positive and uplifting and really helped her a lot because she'd had a very difficult life. So I, uh, I kind of stored that away in my memory banks and, you know, and, and decided I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to learn more. So that's when I went to the local bookstores I was telling you earlier, and, and I thought, well, I'll see if I can find any books about Sai Baba. And <laughs> I went to the very back of the store in the religion and spirituality section, and I found one book. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. I remember it was purple on the cover, and I don't remember exactly what the title was, but I remember thumbing through the book, 
From the back forward, you from said? From the back forward, exactly. Just kind of, you know, thumbing through the pages very quickly. And I saw his face very clearly, a very clear picture of him. And I thought, I'm going to buy the book. Mm -hmm. So I, I bought the book and I took it home. And then I was once again more carefully looking through the book and all the pages and realized there was no photograph of him in the book. And you checked and double checked and every I, page. Of course, I checked many times because I started to think, wow, this is, something's happening, you know. What and was this all about? What is this all about, you know? And, and of course, I read the book and learned a lot from it. It was a great book. Um, so what that led me to was learning a little bit about uh, the fact that there was an international organization. So I went online and started to look for contacts mm -hmm. and to find out if there was a center anywhere close to me. Yeah. Ooh, and I was able to find a phone number and I called that number and was able to speak to uh, someone who was a lifelong devotee mm -hmm. and she invited me to her home to speak to her and her husband and they basically told me all about the center in Louisville, how it worked. They warmly invited me. Um, immediately, I felt like we were old friends. And we talked for a long time. And, and uh, I remember the thing that struck me most about the two of them. Um, first of all, he was very enthusiastic and just animated. Every, everything he said, he was so animated talking about Sai Baba and the organization. And she was very, uh, very moved as she was talking, so much so that she had tears in her eyes. I remember thinking, this is very special, mm -hmm. you know. So I took all the information and I started go going to the center and the rest is history. Here you are. I believe that being on this path for me is helping me to understand the true nature of reality mm. and how I fit into the big picture, what the true nature of my own reality is. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, the, that's where the rubber meets the road, so yeah. to speak. And, you know, the other part of it is that in trying to understand that and go down that path, it is critical to diminish the ego and somehow find a way to leave it behind. Mm -hmm. If not in this life, then sometime in one's development because it, it, it just gets in the way, it, you know. Um, it, it's what causes us to believe in duality. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the last thing that has been in the forefront of my thoughts for a few years now is the importance of gratitude, living in gratitude all the time, and how Sai Baba talks about as you mentioned earlier today, the importance of equanimity and being grateful for everything that happens, not just the good things. And as a result, to circle back to my earlier uh, comments about my health when I was young, I once considered that the absolute worst time of my life, but now I'm very, very grateful for it. It may have been the catalyst, the single catalyst that put you where it you are. It absolutely was. And how can that be awful? Exactly. Exactly. It was the turning point for me. I tried to say that today in my talk here in Louisville, but it's a tough thing to get across to people, especially mm -hmm. if they're in the midst of the pain. Yes. You don't even want to bring up the topic, I don't think. Right. Wait. One day will come when you profit from this. Right. Yeah. It's right. just too hard, and it's not fair, and it's not loving, I would say, furthermore. I but, know that if someone would have told me at the age of 22 mm -hmm. that someday I would be thankful for everything I was experiencing, yeah. I would not have been aligned with that way of thinking. <laughs> but I am now. 
So final question. Yes. Here you are explaining to me on the other end of this camera some of the most personal and so some of the most challenging spiritual concepts I can imagine anybody ever allows him or herself to be confronted with. How would you tell that to somebody else? And yet you're the president of the Psy Center in Louisville. Well, probably people seek you out to, to hear your story because they need the help. Sometimes, yeah. It's, I guess that um, I would start with something you alluded to a little earlier about the importance of personal experience and um, trying to figure out how to say it, but being with yourself mm -hmm. and uh, studying yourself and through learning about yourself and who you are and, and, um, and learning about these things about Sai Baba, you, you come to a better understanding of God. Yeah. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, of course, simple, yeah. but not easy. <laughs> right. It's but, the difference. But it's, it's that, you know, introspection that is yeah. so important. And that's why in the modern world it's so challenging because there are far more distractions. Yeah. And... I and guess they're not if, all know, good distractions either. They're not all healthy distractions. Right, right. And, you know, a lot of it is amazing in that we can now put our hands on information almost, you know, in a matter of seconds. But the flip side of that is we are overwhelmed by yeah. all of this information. So the, the thing that I would impress upon, for instance, a young person, <clears throat> excuse me, is to constantly be striving to simplify life yeah. and create time to be introspective. Don, thank you very much for opening your heart and from uh, talking about something that's very important that needs to be said. I agree. So thank you, Ted. Well, Don, thank you. This has uh, been a wonderful exchange and I really profited from it. Sairam, Sairam. Sairam.